These are the top 10 softest sneakers that you can buy. About six months ago, I dropped a list of the top 10 most comfortable sneakers for 2024. And what's wild is that since that list came out, that list is almost outdated because a lot of these brands have released brand new sneakers that are even more comfortable. Now to be fair, this list is a little bit different than that list because this list features purely only Max Cushion sneakers, like the softest of the softest sneakers. Now some people might not consider the softest underfoot sneaker or Max Cushion sneakers the most comfortable sneakers they can buy. They might prefer firmer rides or something that fits their foot shape a little bit better. For this video, I specifically compiled the softest underfoot sneakers available on the market and I feel like it's a pretty solid list. And of course, if you want to grab any of the pairs mentioned in today's video I've made sure to link them all through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen starting things off with an honorable mention we've got the Adidas Adi Zero Aruku this shoe is actually a brand new lifestyle silhouette from Adidas it's inspired by running sneakers but it's actually specifically designed for walking what makes this shoe so interesting is not the insane stack height and very soft foam but also this very exaggerated rocker shape the Adi Zero Aruku comes with a pretty standard mesh upper that has these sort of TPU and fuse overlays visually I love the design I think it's actually inspired by Japanese footwear and I think it's a very 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 cool look, probably one of the better looking shoes on the list. But where this shoe gets interesting is this midsole. And first off, the shape. Not only does this midsole have an incredible stack height, it also has this very exaggerated rocker shape so that you really roll into the next step. I mean, you really feel like you're rolling into that step. And because most of the midsole material is underneath the middle of your foot, you really do get a lot of arch support. That said, I mean, it might be more arch support than some people would want, but it is a lot of arch support. But actually my favorite part of this shoe is this brand new foam used in the midsole. It's called Swirl Foam and it's very, very soft. I'd even say it might feel softer than Boost, which is kind of wild. It's a very well cushioned experience. In fact, outside of Adidas's marathon running sneakers, this might be the softest shoe that they make. It's super squishy. You can feel that when you step in the shoe. It's also pretty bouncy, which is nice. But I think the problem that people will have with this shoe is that rocker shape. If they had made this a more standard feeling shoe, maybe it lowered the stack height a little bit or evened it out a little bit. I think a lot more people would be interested in this sneaker because of that insane new swirl foam. However, the reason this shoe is an honorable mention and didn't actually make the list is because this rocker shape might turn some people off and also you really feel all of that material in the middle of your foot and if you have high arches like I do you actually don't mind it but for some people it might not be for them to be fair though I think this is a great all-around sneaker it fits true to size it comes in at a pretty reasonable $140 and you can check it out through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen I'm personally really excited about this shoe I'm excited to rock it I'm excited to style it but it might not be for everybody Number 10, the A6 Super Blast 2. The Super Blast 2 feels absolutely incredible underfoot. And actually, to be fair, it really could have been in the number 9 spot, the number 8 spot, or even the number 7 spot. I think all of the bottom 4 or 5 sneakers in the list are all kind of interchangeable. So really, if you like the number 10 shoe over the number 7 shoe, I think if you buy this shoe instead, you're going to have a pretty similar experience that you would have in the number 7 shoe. It's also just a pretty subjective list, so it really depends on what you like the most, whether it comes down to visuals or comfort or brand. It doesn't really matter. Grab what you like. The A6 Super Blast 2 comes with a pretty thin knit upper which feels really nice on foot because it kind of moves with your foot and molds with your foot it's also very breathable I also like how stretchy it is compared to some of the other sneakers on the list and visually I think the shoe looks dope I actually think it's one of the better looking shoes on the list in addition to the upper being very breathable it's also incredibly well padded specifically around the heel area and when you pair that with this ridiculously thick foam midsole you get an incredibly comfortable experience on foot speaking of the midsole it's made up of two different foams you've got FF turbo plus on the top in this larger thicker blue area and then on the bottom you've got FF black Eco Plus. Now the Turbo Plus is the softer, lighter weight foam that ASICS actually uses in their marathon running sneakers, whereas the FF Blast Eco Plus is still very soft, but it does provide a little bit more stability towards the bottom of the shoe. And as you can see, this shoe has a very wide footprint. In fact, this shoe is relatively wide footer friendly, specifically towards the forefoot. And actually, while we're talking about that, let's talk about fit. I found that this shoe did fit pretty much true to size, and I think that will be the case for most people. I have a size 9 foot, I grabbed it in a size 9, and it fit me great. If you're budget conscious though, this shoe might not be for you. This shoe comes in at a retail price of $200 which is a lot of money. That said, I think the shoe is a great looking sneaker. It's very aggressive, it feels very modern. You can get away with wearing this shoe both for running but also for casual day-to-day -day wear. And of course, it's incredibly soft underfoot, which is the main reason it's on this list. It's actually a really dope silhouette and if you like this aesthetic, I definitely recommend checking it out through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. Number nine, the Saucony Hurricane 24. So according to Saucony, this shoe is their most max cushion sneaker. And you probably could have guessed that from just the stack height. This shoe is incredibly thick underfoot. The Hurricane 24 features an engineered mesh upper, which is pretty breathable, relatively stretchy, at least 
As far as this engineered mesh can be stretchy, but the heel area is the best part of the upper in my opinion. It's ridiculously soft. And actually when it comes to fit, not only does this shoe fit true to size, but because the upper is so wide towards the forefoot, and I guess so is the base, it's very wide footer friendly. And even for myself who has more normal width feet, it still feels great. But of course the reason this shoe is on the list is because of the midsole, which is very soft underfoot and made up of two different foams, Power Run and Power Run PB. I'm assuming the Power Run PB is the foam that's on the inside of the shoe because they're calling that the energy return foam and then the standard Power Run is the supportive foam that kind of holds the Power Run PB in place, but I'm not 100% sure. That said, this shoe is incredibly soft underfoot, probably my favorite pair of Sockenies, at least for running and overall comfort, and the upper of this shoe is so nicely padded as well, it really creates an all-around incredibly comfortable package. In fact, I like the upper of this shoe better than the upper on the next shoe on the list. The Hurricane 24s not only feature a very soft underfoot cushion because of the Power Run and Power Run PB foams, but also a very well padded upper. Number 8, the Hoka Sky Flow. So the Hoka Sky Flow is one of Hoka's more popular popular running sneaker models, and it's incredibly soft underfoot. A lot of people like to compare it to the Clifton 9, which could be considered more of a walking sneaker, but in my opinion, I find the midsole of this shoe just a tad bit softer, and the overall package just more comfortable on foot. But hey, realistically, you can't really go wrong with either one. The Hoka Sky Flow comes with the Jacquard upper, which is pretty well padded and relatively breathable. Compared to some of the other shoes on the list, it's definitely not the most breathable, but it is breathable enough. The tongue of the sneaker is well padded, and so is the ankle area, but where this shoe really shines is the midsole, and it is very plush underfoot. It really does a nice job of cushioning your ride but also springing you into the next step. And in some cases I think the shoe is more springy than some of the other options that we're going to talk about later on in the video. I've recently been really digging Hoka sneakers, I've been wearing them a bunch, and then the kind of shoes that yes, you can wear for running, and they're probably mainly designed for running, but they are also great everyday casual sneakers because of how comfortable they are in foot, and the fact that they look decent. I mean they're not crazy beautiful sneakers, but they are very wearable and very clean. But getting to the price, the Skyflow comes in at 160 bucks, and it fits pretty much true to size. And sizing is generally the same on the Clifton 9. However, this shoe has a slightly cheaper price point of 145 bucks. Number seven, the Nike Invincible Run 3. So for the last few years, the Nike Invincible Run 3, or just any version of the Nike Invincible Run, has sort of topped my list of most comfortable sneakers from really any brand. However, over the last year, a lot of other brands have started releasing just insane max cushion sneakers, and in my opinion, this shoe's dropped pretty far down the top 10 list. That being said, it's still an incredibly comfortable sneaker, and I still think it's the most comfortable shoe that Nike makes. Nike does technically make softer underfoot shoes like the Alpha Fly 3s, however, those shoes are specifically designed for race day, and they're not the kind of shoes that you can wear casually, so I didn't feel right including them on the list. The Invincible 3, however, is a great everyday lifestyle sneaker. It looks good, and it can be used for recovery runs. Now, when it comes to running in this shoe, I would say that it's probably one of the least stable shoes on this list. Some of the shoes that we're going to talk about later on in the list are much wider, especially towards the forefoot, so you feel a lot less likely to roll your ankle in those shoes. This one, I haven't had any issues with it, but I do find that my heel can feel like it's maybe going to fall off of the footbed here and there. And that's really just because the Zumax foam in the midsole is so soft and so cushy, and there's not really a lot of support going on. However, if you're gonna rock this shoe purely casually, it's a great everyday sneaker. It's super soft. The fly knit used on the upper is also very breathable. It's not the softest material in the world, but it does move with your foot, and it does feel good on foot. It's just not gonna feel super plush. I do also really like the design of this shoe. I think it's very, very clean, very wearable, and probably the best looking Invincible sneaker. Now the Invincible 3 does kind of come with a caveat. It's one of the oldest shoes on the list. It hasn't been updated in the last couple years, and because of that, I think that there is an update coming probably in the next couple months. So if you wanna grab Nike's newest Max Cushion sneaker, I would say wait. I just have this feeling that something's dropping in November and December. I've seen some leaks that could be the actual sneaker, I'm not sure. So if you wanna wait for the latest and greatest, stick it out. But if you wanna grab this shoe, you can grab it for insanely discounted rates right now on Nike's website, on Foot Locker, all linked through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. It's a solid lifestyle choice. It fits true to size. Even though it retails for 180 bucks, you can grab it for like 130 right now. So I don't think you'll be mad that you grabbed this sneaker for a discount and added it to your rotation. Number six, the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V4. So Possibly prematurely, I dropped a video, actually two videos, calling this the most comfortable sneaker of the year. One where I reviewed this shoe and one where I made a top 10 most comfortable sneakers of the year video. And uh, while I still think this shoe is incredibly comfortable underfoot, there are definitely more options out there now that I think are softer. Now to be fair, when I made that top 10 list, I wasn't basing comfort purely on the underfoot cushion, and that's why this shoe was the number one shoe on the list because it was also incredibly breathable and incredibly light. However, for this specific list where we're focusing purely on underfoot cushion, this shoe is not the number one choice. That said, it's still an awesome shoe. It's still my go-to running sneaker. It's still a sneaker I wear all the time, as you can probably tell from all the dirt and grime on it, but it's not the most plush. I mean, you could probably tell from just the thickness of the midsole. It's not even the thickest midsole that we've seen so far 
far in this video. But diving into the shoe, the upper is made up of a lightweight, very breathable mesh, which obviously is breathable because the material is so thin. There is some padding around the ankle area. It's just enough, in my opinion. It's not going to blow you away with plushness, but it gets the job done. But where this shoe really shines, besides the lightweightness of this sneaker and the breathability, is this super soft fuel cell midsole. Now, according to New Balance, fuel cell is not their plushest foam that they make. I think Fresh Foam X is their plushest foam. But personally, I found that this foam, but personally, I kind of like this foam better because it seems a little bit softer. The only downside with this shoe compared to some of the other New Balances that are coming up on the list, because there are more, is that those shoes feature a much higher stack height, so you get a lot more of that foam underneath your foot. So, there's that. That being said, this shoe is still very soft, it's still very comfortable, and I think it's a great all-around running sneaker. Another great aspect of this shoe is the price point. This shoe comes in at just 140 bucks, which for what you're getting is a steal. And when it comes to sizing, this shoe does seem to fit true to size, at least that's what I found. I think it's an excellent overall shoe for both lifestyle, casual wear, and for running. In my experience, it's so lightweight that you just forget that you're wearing it. It's incredible. But of course, if you want to enhance the comfort of your shoes and also the aesthetics of your shoes, I would recommend grabbing a pair of Apothecary socks, my sock brand. Sure, I get I'm a little bit biased, but they're incredibly comfortable on foot and they look amazing with all the sneakers in your collection. So check them out, link in the description below. Number five, the Puma Mag Max Nitro. So I think this is the first or one of the first truly max cushion sneakers from Puma, at least in a while. And honestly, Puma killed it with this shoe. In fact, this shoe is so popular, it's actually sold out on Puma's website. And I had to go to, I think, Runner's Warehouse to grab it, and they only had a size nine and a half left, so it's a size up from what I usually wear. But what I'm getting at is that this shoe is so popular, it's actually kind of difficult to buy. The Mag Max Nitro features a relatively standard feeling engineered mesh upper, which does have some nice padding around the heel area, and is also pretty breathable. I've got to say, visually, I really like the Puma branding on the side of the shoe it makes the sneaker feel fast of course you've got the actual puma branding on the medial side of the toe the tongue itself is gusseted i keep mixing up the name of the shoe and calling it mad max and not mag max but i mean that's on puma to be honest with you either way the best part of the sneaker is this nitro foam midsole which is incredibly thick i mean the stack height is stupid tall obviously like a lot of max cushion sneakers the foam does kind of wrap up over the sides of your foot so you're really not standing on as much foam as it would look like from the side of the shoe but you're still standing on a lot now what I really like about this nitro foam is not only is it very soft underfoot, but it's still very springy and very bouncy. And I feel like that's one thing that Puma might have over some of these other brands. The other foams are very, very soft and in a lot of cases softer than this foam, but they're not as springy as this foam. So this shoe might be one of the springier and maybe even faster Max Cushion running sneakers, which is not something you usually say about a Max Cushion running sneaker. They're usually a slow recovery running sneaker, but this shoe is relatively fast. But when I was lightly jogging in this shoe and walking around in the sneaker, I found that it did still offer some nice spring in my step, which is not something I expected, especially from a midsole this thick. And actually, the more I look at this shoe, the more I like it. I think it's one of the cooler looking shoes on the list. It's got this really nice sculpting on the midsole, this sort of fade along the midsole, which changes colors depending on the colorway. It's also a nice touch. All around, it's very clean. As for sizing, the shoe does fit pretty much true to size, at least from what I could tell, against other size nine and a half sneakers. I had to go up half a size with this shoe, like I mentioned earlier, so I compared it to other nine and a half sneakers and it felt generally the same. Pricing wise though, the shoe is on the higher end of things at 180 bucks. And like I mentioned before, maybe it's because it just came out, but this shoe is pretty difficult to find. Definitely in store, but also online. So if you want a pair of these, it's not gonna be the easiest shoe to grab. However, I have linked it through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen if you wanna try and find it through resale sites or maybe even Puma restocking it. Number four, the Brooks Glycerin Max. So Brooks literally just launched the brand new Glycerin Max as their ultimate max cushion sneaker. And I mean, it looks like a max cushion sneaker. Look how thick that midsole is, it's ridiculous. Now to be fair, we've already looked at some pretty thick midsoles earlier on in the list and we will look at some more as we continue down the list. But out of all the shoes that feature like a three inch midsole, this is probably my favorite visually. I just love the aesthetics of this midsole and the sculpting. It makes it look less thick and chunky. It makes it seem more fast and speedy, and I really like that about it. So the midsole of the shoe comes with the brand new Brooks DNA tuned cushion, which is very soft underneath your heel and slightly firmer towards the forefoot. That being said, firmer is a relative word because the forefoot of the shoe is also incredibly soft. It's, I guess, slightly firmer compared to the heel. This incredibly thick stack height, specifically towards the heel, provides a lot of impact protection, especially if you're going for a recovery run, maybe you have bad knees, or if you just want a day-to-day -day lifestyle sneaker that feels ridiculous underfoot. I mean, I know pretty much every shoe on this list is very soft underfoot, but this one is very, very soft. Again, I guess kind of relative compared to like regular sneakers. It's it's number four on the list for a reason. But the midsole is not the only super soft part of the shoe. The upper of this shoe is also incredibly soft, incredibly breathable, and very plush. I mean, the padding around the ankle area is incredibly thick and very, very soft and plush. The knit used on this shoe is also surprisingly soft for a knit, and it's incredibly breathable and very stretchy. 
stretchy. And even the tongue, the tongue is really well padded. Plus this shoe has a very wide base, so it's very stable and relatively wide footer friendly. And actually speaking of that, this shoe does fit true to size. The only downside that I can think of of this shoe is the fact that it retails for $200, which makes it one of the most expensive shoes on the list. Is it worth that price? Yeah, in my opinion, I think it is. But there are other shoes that are a little bit cheaper that offer a bit more underfoot cushion. So if you're interested in those, stay tuned. Number three, the New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 V14. This is obviously not the first New Balance shoe on the list, and it actually won't be the last, but it is probably my personal favorite shoe on the list. And the reason for that is that this shoe combines incredible underfoot comfort with pretty decent styling. Like, I think this might be one of the best, if not the best looking shoe on the list. Hey, at least in my opinion, this list is all sort of subjective, so you might think differently, but I think this shoe looks clean. New Balance says if they only released one running sneaker, the 1080 would be it. And every year, each version of the New Balance 1080 seems to get better. And it's kind of wild to say, but that's becoming a rarer thing when it comes to footwear. Sneaker brands sometimes go backwards when it comes to the newest sneaker in their running lines or sports lines or whatever the case may be. When it comes to New Balance, pretty much everything that they've dropped recently has been a better version of what they dropped the previous year. And that is absolutely the case with the New Balance 1080 V14, at least in my opinion. It's incredibly soft underfoot. It looks better than last year's model. It's just all around more comfortable than last year's model. And it's probably a better running sneaker too. Now, I'll be honest, I've only run in this shoe once, so I can't give you guys like a full, this is the best running sneaker ever sort of spiel, but I will say that I was very, very happy with my experience running in this shoe. According to New Balance, one of the biggest differences between the 1080 V13 and the 1080 V14 is this new Jacquard mesh upper. This upper increases breathability in certain areas and adds some more stability in other areas, and all around, I just think it looks nicer. I get for a lot of people that's not the most important thing out there, but for me, a sneakerhead, visuals are really important. Like previous years, the upper feels great on foot, it's very well padded, it's pretty breathable, and it's also very stretchy, so it kind of moves with your foot. I mean, even the tongue is pretty well padded, but where this shoe really shines is the midsole. The midsole of this sneaker, as it says right there on the forefoot, is made up of Fresh Foam X. And Fresh Foam X is very soft underfoot. And it also provides a really nice bounce into the next step. And while I really love Fuel Cell, like the Fuel Cell that we talked about in the Fuel Cell Rebel V4, that shoe overall wasn't as comfortable as this shoe because the upper on this shoe is a little bit softer. And there's just more foam in this midsole, which provides a bit more of a squishier ride. And if you're looking for purely that max cushion, super soft all around your foot feel, this is probably the way to go. When it comes to fit, I found the 1080 V14 to fit true to size. And it's also relatively wide footer friendly. I'm a regular standard width footer. So for me, it seemed like there was a little bit of extra room on the sides. I didn't need the extra width, but you do have it if you need it. And for price point, the 1080 V14 comes in at a reasonable 165 bucks. Number two, the On Cloud Eclipse. So I recently dropped a video on the top 10 On sneakers of 2024, and this shoe was very close to the top of the list. It was actually the most comfortable and softest shoe on the list, but I put another shoe at number one because that shoe I just see myself wearing more on a day-to-day -day basis. But with that being said, the On Cloud Eclipse is absolutely no slouch. This shoe is incredibly soft underfoot, looks pretty decent, and is one of the best sneakers that On makes. The upper of the shoe is made up of an engineered mesh, which is relatively soft and stretchy, but it's very breathable, and it's also really nicely padded around the ankle area. But of course, the star of the show is this midsole, which features Cloud Tech Phase, which are these holes, which allows you to see all the way through the midsole. That's actually one of my favorite features of On sneakers, or the punch outs, they just look cool. I think they're awesome. Plus they crumple with every step, so you get sort of a natural cushion no matter what kind of foam you're using in the midsole. But actually speaking of the foam, the On Cloud Eclipse uses Helium Super Foam, which is their softest foam that they make, and that paired with the Cloud Tech Phase creates this insanely soft underfoot experience. I know I've been saying phrases like that for most, if not all the shoes on the list, but this list is about the top 10 max cushion softest sneakers. So of course, they're all gonna be incredibly soft, especially compared to like every other sneaker out there. These shoes are just ridiculously well cushioned. And the On Cloud Eclipse is genuinely one of the softest shoes out there. On the bottom of the shoe, basically on the outsole, you've got this sort of plastic speedboard. Because of its placement though, the fact that it's not in between the midsole and the bottom of your foot, it's not really gonna spring you into the next step, it's just gonna help with twisting. So don't expect the shoe to be a very springy experience. If you're looking for a max cushion springy sneaker from On, the Cloud Monster 2 is probably the way to go. But with this shoe, your foot is essentially right on top of the Helium Super Foam, so it's gonna feel very soft underneath your foot. The sensation and the comfort of this shoe is better than the Cloud Monster 2, in my opinion and uh, it's a great recovery running sneaker. It's also a solid everyday lifestyle sneaker. I actually really like the aesthetic of this shoe. It's clean, it's simple, it's interesting because of this midsole. It's got just enough personality to it where people might see it and be like, oh, that's a cool looking shoe, but then it's not gonna like turn any heads. Like you're not gonna 
make your boss mad at you because you're wearing a ridiculous shoe. It's just a decent looking everyday sneaker. And again, the comfort in this shoe is incredible. The midsole is definitely the star of the show here. It's very soft underfoot. The upper is fine. It gets the job done. It's not uncomfortable, but it's not like this insanely well padded or insanely soft upper. It's kind of just a nice accent to the midsole of the shoe. When it comes to pricing, the On Cloud Eclipse does come in at the higher end at 180 bucks. So it's not going to be a cheap shoe by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not going to break the bank. And as for fit, I found the shoe to be true to size. Number one, the New Balance Fresh Foam X More V5. Every shoe on this list is great. I mean, you can't go wrong with literally any of them. They're all great sneakers, but if you're looking for the absolute most cushion, the plushest ride, the most insane stack height, the New Balance Fresh Foam X More V5 is the absolute way to go. In fact, I just dropped a full in-depth review of this sneaker, and if you guys want to check that out, there will be a link on your screen. But I've got to admit, this is probably the most comfortable shoe I've ever worn. Now, like I've been saying throughout this video, comfort is subjective, so maybe the softest underfoot shoe might not be the most comfortable shoe for you, but if you are looking for pure softness underfoot, and even some softness on top of your foot, this shoe is the way to go. New Balance is doing the Fresh Foam X most on this shoe. It's so stupid. <laughs> they went all out in this shoe. So the name of the shoe tells you exactly what's in the midsole. It's Fresh Foam X. It's just this huge amount of Fresh Foam X, probably like you know, two or three inches of Fresh Foam X. There's a four millimeter drop from heel to toe, so you still got a lot of Fresh Foam X underneath your forefoot. And even just visually, the stack height on this shoe looks absurd. And you probably could have guessed that having this much super soft and squishy foam underneath your foot would translate to having a very comfortable and very plush underfoot experience. And yes, that is absolutely the case. New Balance has positioned this shoe as a recovery running sneaker and an everyday lifestyle sneaker. And I think in both of those things, it excels. Running in this shoe is great. It's super soft in your joints. It's very, very comfortable. Obviously, you're not going to set any lap times in this shoe because you're not going to get that much springiness. You're mainly just kind of I wouldn't say sinking into the shoe, but definitely sitting in the shoe. Like you're sort of sitting a little bit lower than the stack height would make it look. You're not really getting sprung into the next step. You're just kind of bouncing along as you go. And that's fine. It feels amazing, but it's not going to give you any extra speed benefits. But for those long, slow runs, if you're looking for a max cushion sneaker, this shoe is ideal. The midsole is so soft and the upper is actually pretty well padded too, especially around the ankle area. There is also some padding around the toe, which is surprising. Like they just knit in some extra thickness, which actually does add some decent padding to your toe area, which I didn't expect. It also doesn't make it too stiff, like it's still a pretty stretchy upper. All around comfort for this shoe. If you're looking for like the softest shoe out there, this is a 10 out of 10. It's incredibly soft. I, I don't see this shoe getting any more comfortable in the next iteration, the Exmoor V5. It could. And I think it, I guess it is possible, but honestly, I don't know how they would do that. Would they increase the stack height even more? That would be nuts. I guess they could change the makeup of the foam itself, but still, I mean, it's just, this is already so soft. For me, the only downside of the sneaker is the aesthetics. I don't think it's a bad looking shoe. I just don't think it's the best looking shoe. And I feel like this insanely thick midsole will turn some people off. It looks like one of those crazy chunky Balenciagas. And for some people that might be a good thing, but for me, I feel like it is a bit ridiculous. Now, personally, I kind of love ridiculous looking sneakers. So I'm not mad at this at all. And the fact that it's so incredibly comfortable underfoot, I mean, this has become a daily wear for me. But I totally understand if this look is not for you. And I think some of the previous shoes that we just talked about, like the Brooks Glycerin Ghost Maxes or the On Cloud Eclipse, or even the 1080 V14s, you can get a similar on foot experience without this sort of oversized shoe look. Now, when it comes to fit, the New Balance Fresh Foam X does fit true to size. It is wide footer friendly, as you could probably see by this insanely wide forefoot area. I mean, it's, it's a very, very wide shoe. And actually because of that, it's also a pretty stable shoe, which is something that not all super soft sneakers are. Because they gave the shoe such a wide base, it works well for wide footers and it just doesn't really roll around when you're wearing it, which I like. And then of course, getting to pricing, this shoe comes in at $155, which I think is very middle of the road. I'm really happy with that price point. But I personally think that this is the most comfortable shoe that you can buy right now if you're looking for max cushion softness under feet. And if you want to grab this shoe for yourself or any of the other sneakers that we talked about in today's video, I've made sure to link them all through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. But at this point, I would love to know your thoughts on this list. Do you agree with it? Do you feel like I left any shoes off? Let me know all those comments in the comment section down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.